Hello everyone. Hope your Wednesday is going well. Uh, another nice fall day out there. Uh, getting ready for the chowder of the weekend and uh, other things. But uh, today I want to jump back into Ruth chapter 4 after uh, being the Psalms yesterday. And uh, we're picking them back up the story in uh, Ruth chapter 4 verses 11 to 13. Let me read it for you and then we'll talk about it. Then the elders and all the people at the gate said, We are witnesses. May the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home like Rachel and Leah, who together built up the family of Israel. May you have standing in Ephrathah and be famous in Bethlehem. Through the offspring of the Lord gives you by this young woman, may your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. Uh, we have one more day. We'll finish it up tomorrow with uh, sort of the rest of the story. But uh, this is sort of the the end of sort of this process that uh, we've seen with with uh, Boaz and Ruth and uh, Naomi sort of uh, pulling the strings in the in the background. But uh, uh, it really is a you know kind of the end of a beautiful love story here with blessing and everything else. But Let's go to the questions. The first one is this. How is God's lo loyal love causing you to welcome outsiders into your community and to pray for their best? Who else could you invite to study the Bible with you? Uh, I think this is a really good good question, good thing to bring up again. I mean, we we talked about hesed, that, that loyal love that... Uh, uh, you know, that we've talked about throughout this series, and we see it at work here where, you know, these, it's not just Boaz now, it's this group of people that, that sort of pray this blessing on their, their marriage, uh, welcoming this outsider uh, to, to, into their community and, and really uh, into their religion. I mean, this is, this is welcoming her into the part of God's story and, and how, uh, you know, eventually, and we'll talk more about that tomorrow, but but the the ultimate, uh, you know, this being in the line of Jesus. And so, uh, you know, they're welcoming her in and, and, and really showing this kind of loyal love uh, to Ruth. And, and uh, uh, it's just kind of a neat thing. Uh, the next question is, how is Ruth's desire, spoken as a vow in one, uh, chapter 1, verses 16 and 17, fulfilled beyond all her expectations? And what can you praise God for giving you beyond your greatest expectations? So, so if you remember back back in chapter one, Ruth had had said, you know, your people will be my people, your God will be my my God. Uh, she's she's coming along with Naomi and and saying, you know, I'm going to just be be part of your family. And uh, you know, it's it's really is a neat way that she commits herself. Uh, to this and 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 she had this I don't know what her expectations were it couldn't have been much uh, you know she's she's leaving with Naomi who's empty who's bitter uh, who has not a lot of hope but yet God's still at work God's gonna gonna make things happen and and it's it's a kind of a you know there again a beautiful thing and and how God works it all out and and so you know now she has this new husband uh, she has everything, you know, her life will be taken care of. She has a son who eventually be, is in the line of Jesus. Uh, it, it's, it, it's just, you know, beyond expectations. And, uh, I think God works in our, our lives that way so often. I, I think about in my life, I, I've seen it, you know, in the blessings that I have from my family, my parents, uh, my, my wife and kids and, uh, uh, just, just our church family. Just, I'm blessed in so many ways, and it's, it's beyond, it's, it's well beyond what I deserve, and, and is, is such a good, uh, you know, such a blessing from the Lord. Well, let's go to the devotional part. The first, first uh, headline is "Joy is Contagious." From foreign lands to Bethlehem's grain fields, threshing floor, and town gate, God directs the events in the Book of Ruth. Everyone involved experiences surprising outcomes designed by God for his redemptive purposes. Uh, you know, everyone involved, it, it's, it's all worked out. It's kind of surprising the way it's worked out, but it's all worked out well and according to God's purposes. So when Boaz's private promise on the threshing floor is celebrated publicly, Bethlehem's community overflows with joy and praise. Ruth had entered Bethlehem as a foreigner to everyone. She was marginalized by society, toiling on the edges of the fields, 
Uh, now she's known. She is free to enter into her new home as Boaz's wife. The community honors Boaz and Ruth. The people seek God's grace and favor, blessing uh, for Ruth and Boaz, two people who, uh, you know, with, with faith and noble characters as co-heirs and God's image bearers. Uh, it, it, you know, like I said, it's a wonderful thing to see. He says, collectively, they seek the same favor for these two that the Lord has shown to the foundational women in their heritage of faith. And, and we'll talk about that next. The next section is bountiful blessing. So their customary blessing in verse 11 exalts women who risked everything to build up Israel. It says, may the Lord make the woman who is coming into your home, you know, may Ruth be like Rachel and Leah, who together made up the family of Israel. May your family be like that of Perez, whom Tamar bore to Judah. Uh, Rachel, Leah, and Tamar experienced great griefs and joys. They, they had this you know, emptiness, but then we're, the Lord made them full. Uh, Rachel and Leah, their father, tricked Jacob into marrying both of these sisters in exchange for 14 years of service. They later left their home in Haran with Jacob to come uh, to Canaan. They they left their homeland to come uh, to be be you know sort of mirroring what what Ruth has done. And then there's Tamar, this childless Canaanite woman, uh, was twice widowed by the deaths of Judah's sons. Uh, Judah employed the same laws Naomi and Ruth applied to Boaz, uh, or applied by Boaz in order to marry his second son to Tamar after his first son died. After the second son's death, Judah refused to provide another guardian redeemer. It's the same law. It's the same thing that was set up by God, except for, you know, in this this case, Judah didn't didn't apply it after his second son was had died. Uh, he was afraid that the you know he would he would lose more. It's in a desperate move that almost cost her life. Tamar tricked her father-in-law Judah. She bore his offspring to maintain the family. In God's mercy, her son Perez was, was the ancestor of Salmon. He married Rahab and fathered Boaz in the royal line of, of Israel. And so we see this continuing on the, the royal line. Uh, it's really an amazing story, an amazing part to this story. God brought all this about. He's, he's, he's ultimately the one. I, I mentioned Naomi's kind of pulling the strings here, but, but really the Lord's making all this happen. And it has a happy ending. That's our third third uh, section here. It says, Ruth's loyalty is not simply to Naomi, but to the true God Naomi knows. Verse 13 reports how God blesses Naomi to Ruth's delight. He gives Boaz and Ruth a son named Obed, who would become Naomi's own guardian redeemer. The young widow Ruth found faith, a home, and a husband in Israel. Uh, you know, it's kind of almost like, who would have thought, you know, how far she had come. Uh, from being a foreigner in a foreign land and knowing nothing about uh, the Lord and, and faith and all that stuff. And here she is, you know, uh, in the line of Christ. Uh, you know, so she found faith, a home, and a husband in Israel. She became the great-grandmother of King David, a despised Moabite, gained a place of honor in the human ancestry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Over and over, Ruth's story emphasizes her origin from a country hostile to and excluded from God's people. But when Boaz marries Ruth, he brings her into his own family, no longer foreign or widowed. God's grace gives Ruth a new identity, a new home, a new future, everything she needs. What a picture of God's powerful love for all who, could, who come from death into life through Jesus Christ. While we were enemies of God and foreigners to God's promises, Jesus willingly died to redeem sinners by his own blood. Uh, again, it's just a beautiful picture and, and we're, you know, seeing this kind of wrap up and, and, you know, the, the Naomi gains a son from, uh, from Boaz and Ruth. And, uh, uh, like I said, it's, it's just an incredible, she's now full. And we'll talk more about that tomorrow as we wrap up the series, but let's, uh, let's, uh, pray together. Lord, we thank you for this day. Thank you for this opportunity to look at your word. And we sort of see the fulfillment of, your plan in Ruth and Boaz and Naomi's lives, and we'll see more of that tomorrow. But but we we thank you, Lord, for how you you work to bring them together. Who would have thought? And you do that in so many different ways. I think in my own life and how you brought my wife and I together. And you know who would have thought? But you did it. And we thank you, Lord, for how you work in each of our hearts, each of our lives, and and bring us to the place where we need to be. Uh, to be in your transforming presence, ultimately. That's what we uh, you know, hope for and long for. And Lord, you are so faithful and good to help us in those things. 
Lord, continue to work in our lives. Uh, lead us how you want to lead us and help us to grow in our, our knowledge and faith and love in you. Lord, thank you. Lord, be with those that are hurting today, those that are sick, those that need a touch from you. Lord, just meet their needs and uh, be very close to them. Uh, Lord, it's a, these are tough days, but we thank you for your presence, your transforming presence. Lord, it's all we need. Thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, thanks for watching again today. We'll be back tomorrow, and uh, we'll uh, we'll see you later. We'll wrap up. Well, we won't wrap it up. We'll have the wrap up on on Friday, but uh, uh, we're, we'll get to the end of of uh, chapter four. But have a great rest of your day. We'll talk to you later. Bye bye.